We're at Mitsubishi headquarters. We're doing a training class. There's a new product that is probably your first time hearing about. Anyway, I want to show everybody this product. I've never seen it in person. I, I bet probably no one watching this has ever seen this. Curious everybody's thoughts. These are normal city multi-units and they're piped to normal branch boxes. So the refrigerant goes in and gets divvied up to all of our indoor units and then the units cool. Now, branch controllers per Mitsubishi uh, on with this new A2 well refrigerant they have come out with. Are they out for 410? Oh really? So yeah, this is this is 410A still. I thought this was a how how old is this product? Brand new. Okay. Brands make it new. So that but it has been sold already. Yeah. Oh yeah, there there's there are uh, quite a few projects, uh, a high rise, um, a couple schools. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, so these are already, we already have projects, not, not us, <laughs> but there's already projects going on that have these specced out and they're going to be, they're getting installed, but, uh, yeah, it's refrigerant and then the refrigerant comes in here, right over here. These are our refrigerant lines, goes in, and then we have our refrigerant to water heat exchangers right there. And, um, then we've got our pump and we've got a bunch of zone valves. And then instead of the, all the branches being fed with refrigerant, like they are with typical branch controllers, the branches are fed with a hydronic loop. So all of these lines coming off, these are all water lines. And then it feeds our indoors and our indoors can be our normal four-way cassettes, our normal wall mount, um, really, I don't know which other ones. I mean, here's another wall mount. This is a hydronic uh, mini split style wall mount unit. It's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, anything I'm missing? I mean, it's just like typical hydronic loop stuff. We've got our expansion tank. Yeah, they have a, uh, there's a sub branch controller here and that sub branch controller is fed with these pipes so it's they they pipe water to the sub branch controller so you can get more zones off of the same outdoor by piping more water lines to to here it's pretty nuts honestly um not something i'd ever seen it's a brand new product i didn't even think that it was going to be out in 410 evidently it is um there's a reversing valve in there a couple of reversing valves in there. So this is our little refrigerant section, evidently, right? And then uh, here's some LEVs. Here's our hydronic pump strainer, and then all these little zone valves all over the place. So, and then over here we got more heat exchangers, another strainer, another pump, and we, we do all of our wiring. I'm assuming in here. Not gonna open yeah. it right now, but there's our wiring diagram. So pretty neat. Honestly, it's not a it's not that crazy of a product considering what's already being done. I don't know if it's a better or a worse product than uh, these, but they definitely won't require as much refrigerant. It's been a few days. We finished the Mitsubishi training. I wanted to chime in here with some thoughts and some info that I learned after recording. So first thing, this video is from 2016. This is in the UK. And I mean, you could say, oh, maybe it wasn't like, maybe they released a, like something, but yeah, this one's from five years ago and it's like the same exact branch box. Look at that. What does this tell us? This, this product has already been released. So why, why would they do that? Why wouldn't they release in the US market? Maybe they wanted to release it in a smaller market first to work out bugs. That'd be my theory, I don't know. But yeah, this, this product has been in development at a minimum since 2016, probably earlier than that. I, I did try to do some research and find another manufacturer that did the same 
hybrid VRF thing, I do believe right now that Mitsubishi is the only one doing it. So there's other heat recovery setups that you can um, like heat, like create hot water, which could be used for radiant heat or hot water heating, but I don't think any other ones actually convert water for the zones. Now, let's go over, in, based on my limited knowledge of this system, I'm, I, I wanna go over maybe some pros and cons and if people wanna chime in with their thoughts in the comments, then I, I'm all ears too. It's not, this isn't something I'm probably gonna install, just thought I'd make a video on it. So um, from an objective point of view as someone who works on stuff like this, Let's go over some pros. So um, the main thing that I think the reason this product was developed was because of refrigerant concentration. So when you have a small room, like say we put a wall unit here, uh, when you have a VRF system that, I mean, some of these systems might hold 100 plus pounds of refrigerant. Sometimes they might be 200 pounds of refrigerant. So if you get a major leak in a wall unit in a small room, then technically well it's bad it's bad for multiple reasons but it's bad i mean it's like technically you can asphyxiate if you get enough if you get a big enough leak you could kill somebody or with the new a2l stuff you can start a fire i thought that this i mean i i honestly thought that this was only h2l i didn't not, not realize until seeing it in person that they had it out for 410a already along the same vein the whole system requires less refrigerant refrigerant is a lot cheaper or water is a lot cheaper than refrigerant. So going to all the zones, uh, if you get a, a small water leak, that's not. Yeah, so we have, we have less refrigerant in the system. That's not gonna make a huge difference in price on install. Um, but for repairs, like that makes it, I mean, if you, if you know you have a refrigerant leak, then it, like, well, yeah, I guess go, going back to the water, if you have a minor water leak, say in one of the coils, it's just gonna drip down the drain. And so that's not a super big deal. Obviously a major leak, you just have the ball valves and you shut them off. That's like normal in hydronic. So like anytime you have a water coil, but it, it's like a, a minor coil. I mean, when you have 50 indoor units, a minor refrigerant leak with a standard VRF system, technically you're supposed to find the leak, repair the leak, and um, pull the whole charge and weigh it back in so that you know exactly how much is in there. With these water ones, I mean, it's like if it's not leaking, if it's only leaking water, you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to do anything with the refrigerant. If it's not a noticeable leak, it'll just use the makeup water um, to, uh, to like get by until the leak gets bigger. So you can't really do just makeup refrigerant the same way you can do makeup water. So. Um, yeah, you don't have to worry about like refrigerant restrictions. You don't have to worry about anything goofy within all the coils, like all the coils on a normal VRF system, every single one has a expansion valve. So it, it can get pretty crazy when you're trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, that's really the main pro that I see is just the, like you're not dealing with refrigerant problems as much. Besides the only other uh, main pro that I, I can see there being, which is a, a true pro, would be the fact that it actually does proper heat recovery. Um, there's not, I mean, it's like you can do heat in one zone, cool in the other simultaneously. Let's go into cons. The first big con is gonna be install cost. Like there is no way, I mean, first off, this branch box is gonna be super expensive. Second off, like, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe maybe we can use PEX if we were to install this. I don't know if that's kosher, but uh, I, I don't know if it would be allowed. That's the only thing I can imagine keeping the cost down a little bit. But yeah, the overall install cost of one of these is gonna be just through the roof. And so it's like, I think it'd be even more than a traditional VRF in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. If anybody watching this knows more about that, you can chime in, let me know. Install location. So these branch controllers, they're much more bulky than a, even a normal branch controller. And they're only installed horizontal like this, the way that it was set up in that class too. So you have to have basically a dedicated closet to get these things installed. You can't just, I mean, maybe you could fit it in, in T-Grid, but 
I don't I don't feel like that's a good idea. These things are super heavy, so getting that up in T grid would be a huge pain in the ass, but I guess you could do it if you really wanted to. There's a I believe that there's a 14 ton maximum as far as what I can tell. You cannot twin outdoor units and uh, I, I believe that it's a 14 ton 32 indoor max. So I could be wrong on that. If uh, anybody knows differently than me, uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, and then, yeah, just overall repair and maintenance costs. You have to do water treatment uh, on these. And I mean, some kind of maintenance on your water uh, to keep it from being an issue. And you have to find technicians who understand both VRF and hydronics, which I mean, there's not gonna be very many out there that are like good enough at both to diagnose these units. When I brought that up to Mitsubishi in the class and they were like, oh, if you're a good tech, you'll figure it out. And I'm like, hell yeah, you'll figure it out if you're a good tech, but like, you're gonna bill them what? Like $3,000 in diagnosing? Like, yeah, you figured it out eventually, but like <laughs> you spent three days there. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, $4,000, $5,000 of time to diagnose even simple problems. Um, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. I mean, basically you're gonna end up try having to hire the best of the best technicians to service these. So it, it may not be year one, year two, or even year five, but at like eight years down the road, when you're having actual breakdowns, the, the repair costs are gonna be insanely high. And that's that's just, I mean, I've seen a lot of buildings built in really cool ways and maybe, I mean, if anything, it seems like tech, the field techs nowadays, like the average HVAC tech is regressing in actual skills related to repairs. But this is an example of technology that is way outpacing technician skill level for like from just from what I've seen. So is this something that I'm confident I could repair? Probably, I haven't worked on it, so I don't know. But it, it's like, do I think that very many of my guys could do it? Like, do I think very many of the guys that have ever worked for me could work on this? No. <laughs> so do I think anyone that I've really worked around, would I have confidence in them working on this? Not, not really. There's probably a couple guys out there who I'm like, yeah, they could probably figure this out. But like the vast majority of them, I'm like, yeah, I mean, uh, I can't really imagine very many service techs unless like every problem they run into will be a first. Maybe not everyone, but it's like, oh, I've never done this repair on this system. Like anytime as a tech that happens, it always takes you longer. And I don't know how other companies are doing it, but we bill hourly on VRF stuff. So yeah, like we, I, it just takes too long most of the time. So we're not doing flat rate diagnosing. We're not doing flat rate anything. Unless we find a problem that we are planning on fixing and we can look at it and assess the amount of time we anticipate it taking. But even then, lots of the time it takes longer than what we think. So we always have to quote repairs high if they want flat rate. And I tell our customers that I'm like, hey, if you want flat rate, it's gonna be more expensive. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose on flat rate, but um, on hourly, on hourly we know that we're gonna get paid for the time we spend out there. So it doesn't really matter how long it takes then. I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. I think it's a cool product. Do I think it's, I think maybe used in the right application. And uh, if it was a big enough facility and they had an on-site maintenance guy that was like good at this system. Like say, say there was a facility built and they had their own building engineer that had HVAC experience. Or like say they have a facilities team and they've got five guys and they make sure they always hire someone with HVAC experience. Like that, that would be the best case scenario as far as application because then you don't have to worry about calling a company that, that has a trained individual who's good at working on your equipment. If you do, if you are a building and you, you have to find people like 
like man yeah you are so like you're in deep water at that point especially if it's very if it's important that you're all your zones are working at all times because it's like you're gonna get failures you're not gonna be able, they're not they're not gonna be able to figure it out you'll find a hydronic guy and you'll find a mitsubishi vrf guy you're not gonna find a guy who knows both and then you're gonna have to have them both out there at the same time and they're gonna be button heads and yeah i don't know i i don't know like maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe, maybe this is the future i i can see it being a good application if uh, in certain circumstances, I would just be hesitant to recommend it knowing what I know about the average HVAC tech. Anyway, we're now certified to install Mitsubishi VRF, uh, FYI. Um, I'm not really trying to get into the install side. I really wanted to go to this class because I'm trying to get onto their list as like preferred commercial diamond contractors so that people, when they need service, call us. So. Yeah, I think we have to commit to installing a few units every year to do that. I'm okay with that in theory, but um, I, don't, I don't know how I'm gonna find the people. So if anybody needs Mitsubishi VRF, let us know and we'll, we'll come install it for you guys. So anyway, um, I don't think there's anything I missed. I think that um, it's a cool product, cool tech. It, it combines uh, like chiller technology heat pump and water source and blah, 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 blah. It's all cool and fine and dandy, but in reality, uh, is it gonna be, maybe it's something that I see it installed and my mind changes and I think, wow, hey, this is actually really easy to work on and anybody could figure this out. Well, maybe any VRF guy could figure this out, but it's like just a lot of working parts and, um, I, I honestly, if, with wide adoption, it might not be the worst thing. Um, maybe, maybe it becomes the primary. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe it's a complete flop and Mitsubishi is just missing the mark here and it's not something that anyone's going to want to use. But all right, red out.